Australia became a nation in 1901 after the six colonies voted to unite to become the Commonwealth of Australia. Here's what some of the founding fathers have to say. Fowl Federation. Hello everyone, welcome to Federations Got Talent and as you know today is January 1st, 1901. First up we have Sir Henry Fox, take it away! I started my empire 1815, 27th of May. I work hard all day. Now the first of Jan, 1901. I wait a time, my last kid, and that's when the six colonies became one. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Henry Parkers. Next up, we have Samuel Griffins. Take it away, Samuel Griffins. Who won? You decide! Wicked White Australia Policy In 1901, Australia became a nation and the constitution was written. One of the laws that was introduced was the White Australia Policy. It restricted the number of non-European settlers from entering the country. Here is Jeff, the immigration officer. My name is Jeff! Chris, you have 15 minutes to write your choice in English. But for the purpose of this story, he'll get 30 seconds to write 15 words, and the time starts now. You failed. In your face, Chris. No! That's what happened to people who failed the Australian dictation test. The law was phased out in 1973 for a new immigration act. Lots of people started coming to Australia because of the removed white Australia policy, changing the country for better. One, go. Next person, take C. Well, why not do the test? I need you. No, you're not. If you gave me the country, you have to do the test. Final test. I'll take C. No more get the machine. Can I come in? Yeah. First question. How do you say hi in English? Hmm. I don't know. First question is wrong. Can I come in now? No, why are you turning the queue? Wretched women's rights. Back in the 1800s, women had fewer rights. They were allowed belongings, but according to the law, these belongings were owned by the woman's husbands or fathers. Man, you're under arrest. What? What's that for? You have two handbags. So, I bought a new from that shop over there. If you want one, go buy one for your wife. You bought a new one, then give me that. Hey, that's mine. You have no rights to keep one of the same things. Ha! Take this to my wife. Oh, that's not fair! Women weren't allowed to file a divorce back in the 1800s. Hello, I'd like to file for divorce, please. Wait, is that spouse? Uh, he's here, he's a plant. If you're a real man, you're gonna file for divorce you, but you're a woman, you have no right. So I have no right to file for divorce and I have to live with this plant for the rest of my life? Yes, yeah, but I have, I'm lucky, I have a wonderful spouse. We're going to divorce. What? Why? Because you're too full of yourself and you only marry me because of your good looks. I'll file divorce first. Like this to this lady, you have no rights. Ugh. <laughs> Why did he even marry a plant anyway? Uh... Next! Hi, I'm Rita Goldstein. I'm an Australian woman suffragette. Oh, hello. I'm just waiting to ask some very simple questions. Very simple questions. About yourself. Yes, I love talking by myself, everyone. I know the whole world is listening to this. Were you a woman's suffragette? Yes, so was my mother and father. Whoa. Oh, that's interesting. You're a part of the monster petition. Yes, yeah, so was my mother. Right, 
My mother was very pretty and she was famous for being part of the monster petition. That's not true! You're the famous one! I am? Yes. Oh my god! I'm the famous one! Ha! In your face, mom! Women who protested for the right to vote were known as suffragettes. In Victoria, they took to the streets to get people to sign a petition in support of giving women the right to vote. The petition received 30,000 signatures and became known as the Monster Petition. Sir, there's a monster protest outside! A monster? Where? No, Minister, the other monster! Another monster? I mean, women protesting no. really loudly! What? What do they want? They want the right to vote. Women in politics. Hmm. Here's a song about three politicians who were women. Here's a story of Vida Goldstein who had a dream to become a woman suffragette So did Dorothy Tang and Enid Lyons We were running for parliament We had to be elected I was not elected And we knew it was much more than a hunch We were named the candidates That's the way we all became the political bunch The political bunch The political bunch that's the way we became the political bunch. Did you know, at that time, New South Wales agreed to allow women to vote. Other states waited a while. 1903 was when Tasmania agreed. 1905 was when Queensland agreed. And finally, 1908 was when Victoria agreed. I, Ina Lyons, would like to be the first woman to represent Tasmania in the House of Representatives. I have written newspaper articles, given open air speeches, and been in radio broadcast. I, Dolphy Tagi, would like to be the first lady to join the Senate. I've taught four schools in Western School. I've attended state dresses conferences, and I've good results. I hope you vote for me. I should be the, in charge of this place. I'm going to go run for Parliament. After Australia became a nation, they needed a place for the politicians to sit for Parliament. After considering several cities and towns around Victoria and New South Wales, it was decided that Canberra was the best place. Chaotic Canberra. Alright, we're a nation now, so let's pick a place to have lunch. Uh, I meant to make important changes. I say Sydney. Now, Melbourne is way more trendy. We needed to be closer to Melbourne. Sydney. Melbourne, Sydney, Melbourne, Sydney, Melbourne, Sydney, Melbourne. You're here first. Okay, guys, we're building in New South Wales, but it has to be at least 100 miles away from Sydney. But where? Okay, here's a list. Wow, this list is long. This can only mean one thing. Road, Road trip. trip. Hmm, Armadale is nice. Too far from Melbourne. Hmm, Albury is nice, right by the river. Too close to Melbourne and it's too hot. Well, what about Chimot? It's practically in the mountains, so far away and so cold. I nominate Canberra. Not too hot, not too cold, not too near and not too far. It's in the Goldilocks zone. Just right. Finally! Well, can you bring me some steak? Thank you. Troops at Gallipoli realised they were likely to be beaten and needed to find a way to escape. They knew that the Turks would find out if they left their trenches when the guns stopped firing, so they designed what was known as a drip rifle. Water would drip from one bucket to a bucket below, and when the water below was heavy enough, it would pull the trigger of the rifle, setting off the gun. This way, they managed to escape without getting noticed. Gruesome Gallipoli. But because of part of the British Empire, Australia automatically joined. They had a battle against the Turks in Gallipoli. Here's what happened. Get out the boat, you spawn of chickens. Come on, the Turks are gonna dig themselves. Relax, man. How can we relax? What well, is the lives, man? Beautiful. But the pain in all areas. That's what you get for messing with us. We need to devise a plan. Any ideas? Let's attack their front lines. What you doing? Nothing, we're paying lunch. Get out. Yeah. We can call it Pine Run. It's known 
Learn time in tweet, learn time in, let's move. That's attacking Aussies, they're trying to escape. No, this is my retreat. Half an hour later. Where are they? Do we win? No. We're going home, boys. Yay! Yay! This is the story of how Fred Walker hired chemist Cyril P. Callister to come up with Vegemite, the brown goo that everybody loves. Vile Vegemite. Needs more salt. <coughs> it's too salty. How's it going, Cyril P. Callister? It's horrible. Why? Because whenever it needs more salt, I add more salt and it's just too salty. Okay, what's the main ingredient? It's yeast extract and it's called Vegemite. Did you what now? Vegemite. I even made a competition for the name. So you had the competition without telling me? Yeah. Why? I just did. Anyway, who won? It was Fred Walker's daughter, Shalina. And she chose the name Vegemite? Yeah, and my friend Alan Weeks made this song just for Vegemite. It goes like this. British Marmite. Boss, it's complete. Pure vegetable extract. I own this company and I call this new Vegemite. Hello, Randy Stranger. Would you like to try this new product of Vegemite? Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mmm, this is delicious. Everyone, you should try Vegemite. It's the best thing you'll ever taste. Welcome to tonight's ABC News. Today we have a special guest, Fred Walkers. Fred Walkers, how did you become such a successful businessman? I'm saying this salty brown goo. Sadly, Fred Walker died from a heart failure in 1935. Near Rich Cart, why are you immortality? In 2017, Vegemite recipes changed and they made a limited edition for 2017 and it's called the Vegemite Riot. Horrendous Harbour Bridge. Oh look, a time machine. Okay, set the time to 96 years ago, and here we go. Oh look, Dr. John Bradfield. Let's go say hello. Hey, I have an amazing idea. Lots of people are complaining that there is no bridge. Cars, bus, even trains can be crossed on the bridge. I'm going to build one, but first I should sketch one. Okay, so the length should be 1,149 meters from Wilson Point to the rocks, 139 meters high from the arc of the bridge to the bottom of the bridge. What should I name it? Wait, it's in Sydney and it's across the harbor. The Sydney Harbor Bridge. Wait, that's a great name. What, what should I nick? What should I nickname it? Well, the coat hanger. That sounds very nice. Now going 13 years in the future. Would you like to work for me to build the Harbour Bridge? Yeah, this is my dream. I would like to. It would be an honour for me to be a worker. Okay, let's start building. I'll get the tools and the crane and my friends to help with the Harbour Bridge. Thomas the Builder, can we fix it? Thomas the Builder. Yes, can we can. Henry and Laura and Hansel, Francis and Peter join the crew. Thomas and the gang have so much fun working together. They get the job done. Thomas the Builder, can we fix it? Thomas the Builder. Yes, we can. Also, my bell is. Let's go to 1930. Hooray, the archers touch for the first time. I sure hope this bridge balances. They've used $300 million just to build the bridge. Here we go in 1932. They're testing the bridge. One steam train, two steam train. 96 steam trains later. 
Time for the grand opening. And now to cut the ribbon for the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It's for the Blue Arch Ribbon. Hey. Of the of the and that's all, folks. to Australia for the 1956 Melbourne Olympics. It became very popular, especially after Colour TV was introduced in 1975. Terrible television. Hey, I'm that rich person that owns the cinema. Yeah, but then TV came out and few people come to the cinema. You know, it started off with sports like the Olympics, and now they have everything, and now they're giving the flicks a flick. Yes, go! It's, it is 1956, it's 1975. Colour TV is... Buy Colour TV, it's expensive. It's not to buy and before. If you want one, you're going to get a job and get us one. Fine, I'll do it when I grow up. Outrageous Opera House. In 1959, the Sydney Opera House was built. It was designed by Jan Utzon. He's a famous designer. He has designed many places, but his most famous one is the Sydney Opera House. It's so special that the Queen of England had come to open it. And the winner of the design competition is... The first person to perform at the Opera House was American singer Paul Robeson. He sang Old Man River, the Old Man River. This is technically true, as Paul Robeson climbed the scaffold to sing this song for workers as the Opera House was still being constructed. However, as you're about to learn from this next song, the first official performance after the Opera House was opened was a production of War and Peace. It might seem crazy what you're about to see. But she's been here since 1973 The upper house has the greatest place It's Australia's most iconic place Because the John Alton he is the designer of the opera house Because the John Alton he
currency in 1966. As this poor traveller finds out, there were long queues on changeover day or sea day as Australians exchanged their pounds and pennies for dollars and cents. Dastardly dollars. Hi, what would you like to buy today? Just your supplies please, because I'm going on holiday. Please. Here you go, thank you. Enjoy your holidays. Oh, you're back again. How's your holidays? Good, thank you. I love the mocha, even got a tan. What would you like to buy? Just your supplies, please. This time I'm going to the snow. Three dollars, please. What? Three dollars? Am I still in America? No, it's Australia. Three dollars, please. Haven't you heard? We turned from pounds, pennies, and shillings to dollars and cents on the 14th of February 1966. Why? Many other countries were using the dollar, so Australia decided to use it too. Also, it made calculations easier. It was a good decision, except for the huge lines as people exchanged their money. So can I have my supplies? No way, Jose. You have to go to the bank and exchange your money. Line up at the queue. Oh, fine. This is the queue. I want to be here all day. All I want is my supplies. Australia changed its currency in 1966. As this poor traveller finds out, there were long queues on changeover day or sea day as Australians exchanged their pounds and pennies for dollars and cents. Unruly Uluru. Hello, hello, is anybody there? Hello, hello. Holy moly cowie. Politicians always take forever to get anything done. Hello, hello. <sighs> Yo, madame, may I help you with something? I need to finish my shower. Can I talk to you? It's very, 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 very important. Come in for a cup of tea or some lemonade. So what do you want to have a conversation about? The room. Why? We want it back now. It will take forever. Please! You, so you have to just set this in the corner. I'll call English with you. Okay. Hi, I'm Bob Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how prime minister of Bob Holder. And what you must be, Bob mm -hmm. Watson? That's me. So, I produce want Uluru back. You mean it's rock. It's our as rock. So we're going to have a call. Call. Case coming off soon. Okay, bye. So to case, so me and my buddy are here wanting Uluru back right now. Well, that's not gonna happen because it's ours and it's Air's Rock. It has been our cultural center for many, many, many years. Well, we have been sending tourists for 50 years. Cha ching! What type of activities? Rock climbing, uh, Camping, Amula collection, we're treading on sacred land. Hmm. It goes to a man. In 1992, the High Court of Australia passed the decision that Eddie Mabo and the rest of the Merriam people had traditional land rights to, known as native title to Murray Island. This decision, which holds for all Indigenous Australians, also meant that the law of Terra Nullius, which suggested that no men were living in Australia prior to Europeans, became known as legal fiction. Messy Mabo. Eddie Kwaki Mabo was a Torres Strait Islander who fought for the rights of his people to their land. Eddie Mabo would like to discuss his rights to his land. Order, order. You may sit. Good morning, Judge. I'm here today to discuss the ownership of Murray Island. My family have lived there for generations upon generations, and you and your people just came here and took our money. Yeah, Eddie, keep going. Tell them, bro. Order. Where did you get your degree? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yes. You can't have your land back. Too bad. Next place. Order. Wait, hold on. The rule of terror laws means we were here first. How would you feel if we came and took your land, huh? Did they even got land? Of course. Then why did they take ours? Listen here, old man. If you don't listen to my point, I'll make you. Wait, 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 wait. 
Have you been playing Space Invaders? No, why? Because you're invading in space. Oh, sorry. You just made me angry. God, I can't believe Yes, sir. I can't believe you called me old. I don't even know. Well, of course you're not old. Let's continue. Only because I want to get out. Terra Nullius actually means no man's land, but we were here long before you and your people came to our island. You, you even acted as if we didn't exist. Thanks for watching, mate.